and girls, babies in your diapers, welcome to the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy. That's me, Tiberius. Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a chili video game to talk about, a book about bees, my bone score report, and I have a totally awesome guest, Bill Boy, the young lady. Bernice is a community program manager of the Seminole County Department of Health. We actually call it the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County. We changed that a few years ago because the Department of Health are all part of the state system. So we are one part of the whole state. So today we're going to start off with the video game of the week. And this is going to be yummy. Mmm. And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. Today's video game is Ice Cream Van Simulator. So this is a game with a Roblox platform. It was made by the Peace Factory. Because it is on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. Oh, my cell phone. Mm -hmm. And it is free. I like free. Remember other games from the Peace Factory, like Hotel Wars and Roblox Wipeout. So first off, I got into the game and it looks a lot like other tycoon and simulator games. But there are a few things different. First, you have to go buy some ice cream. Then you go around and sell them to people on the streets and the map. This seems easy. But after you sell a few, people are going to ask you for different flavors and they will not pay you if you give them the wrong flavor. Okay. I wouldn't pay either. I would still pay <laughs> oh, and when you go back to buy the ice cream, the better flavors cost more money. So this is really running a business. So you start with the cheap stuff, and you sell it to earn money to buy nicer stuff, and sell that to buy even nicer stuff. You can upgrade your serving tray to a cart, and then later even an ice cream van. Wow, like the ice cream truck that comes through my neighborhood when I was a kid. Really? So the hard part is... If you give the, someone the wrong flavor, they don't pay you. Then you have lost your investment in that flavor. Hmm. So this is not fun when you're putting all your money back into the business and investing it all to one flavor. So this is smart to have two or three flavors and be careful to only serve people the flavors that they want. A happy customer is what it takes to build your business. So the part I am not happy about it, say you have to go back and forth a lot. The people are spread apart, and it requires a lot of walking. Walking is healthy, so you can walk off the ice cream calories. Also, any feature that reduces time, like teleports and so forth, calls real money. You can't even earn it with hard work. You have to pay real money to get those advantages. Mm -hmm. I give Ice Cream Van Simulator 4 out of 10 stars because it's an okay game for a simulator or tycoon style game. But we spend more time walking than playing the game. I kind of like the walking part, though. Like you're in a game. <laughs> oh, but I still like walking and ice cream. It is different. You have to buy the ice cream first and then selling it to the people. But that is better than having to kill monsters or punching walls all day like other games. I did get my dad to play it for a bit, but he stopped after unlocking the chocolate flavor. Mm. See, David Smith, wall.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> For 40 years, Lighthouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Lighthouse Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. Now it's time for the book of the week, Getting to Know Nature's Children Bees. This book is written by Ellen Kelsey. Let me read you the back of the book. In fact, Venice, would you want to do the honors? I would love to. Let's see. 
Everything you ever wanted to know about bees. This book describes the physical characteristics, habits, and habitats of bees. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So first up, this is an era book, which is worth 0.5 points or half a point. It is rated for 5th grade and 5th month. This is a great series about everything nature. This is an old book series, so they may be hard to find. So this is not like my normal books. This is not fiction. Instead, this is more of a resource book. Kind of like a dictionary, but instead, it's all about bees. So, if you wanted to know anything about bees, this is the book to read. So, like, I learned that bees live everywhere in the world except the polar regions. They live in colonies like ants do and have workers, drones, and a queen. Now, I won't tell you everything, but this is a great resource if you want to know that bees communicate through dance and they can predict the weather. Did you know that? It's called the Bible Dance. Mm. So you can learn what colors a bee can see and how it smells and tastes. You can even learn how to make a bee leave the hive and what the difference between a queen and a drone is. And also, you can learn about why a bee will sting someone and so much more. Wow, that's interesting. I might read this book later. I give getting to know nature's children bees 9 out of 10 stars because I enjoyed learning everything that I ever wanted to know about bees and it reminded me about the project that I did on bees. I hope you got a good grade on that. Oh, yes, I did. Good. This book had so much more information that I had learned on their project. I think they are amazing, and all kids should learn about them. Even adults like me? Yes. Great. The Type Beard Show would like to thank one of our awesome sponsors, StarChannelUS.com. These guys are very, very cool. They bring 21st century surface drainage solutions to reality. They can do corporate and government work. These are the guys that make roads and bridges safe in the rain. You can see all about them at SlotChannelUS.com. That website again is SlotChannelUS.com. The Type View Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl littering, to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing, the Venice is the Community Programs Manager at the Office of Health Promotion and an Education for the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County. Wow, that is a mouthful. But you did pretty good with that. Thank you. So, how are you enjoying being on the show? Is this Hump Day Wednesday? It is. This is making my week exciting. This is great. Thanks for having me, Tiberius. So to jump right in, you have a really wrong title. What exactly does a community programs manager do? I would probably save us some time if I tell you what I didn't do. But as a pro- community programs manager, I oversee different programs that are basically in the community. So what could you interested in being a community programs manager? Well, I went to school and I have my degree so I went to college, and my degree is in biology. Do you like science? Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, also like math. Yes, biology and math. And then I went to school even further, and I received the Master's of Public Health. So I really enjoy making an impact in the community's health outcomes. So, no, I like that. You like that? So we, so keeping kids like yourself healthy. I love coming up with programs, I love finding funding, and just seeing the impact to make our community healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the best part about doing this type of work? Seeing positive outcomes in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the coolest program that you have ever worked on? Mm, So many, but I'll tell you this. Do you know what a triathlete is? A triathlete is an athlete that competes in three different sports. So I have swam, 
biked and I ran a 5K all at the same time. You know how strong that made me feel? So what I like about working with the community, I put on a annual 5K with community partners and it's called the Live, Work, Move Seminole 5K. So that's a 5K that gets people up and moving and active and they compete and complete 3.1 miles at a time and we give them really cool medals. Just love making people stronger. So how do you decide what programs you want to have? Well, we kind of look at the numbers and outcomes. So it's this big word that we use called statistics. So we look at these numbers and we look at areas in the community that may need um, help in a certain area. So if we are encouraging a certain community to get out and become more physically active, we may come up with a program to offer them free dance classes. So, you know, this past year we had free yoga classes. We have free African dance classes and we have Zumba. We don't have bowling or swimming, but we do encourage walking and we also just had a bike to work day. So we, we kind of look at what the community is interested in, but we also look at the positive outcomes that we're trying to impact. So, and then we look at the funding because you know it takes money to make a community healthy, you know? Okay, so what is the hardest part about being a community programs manager? The hardest thing about being a community programs manager is meeting the needs of everyone in the community. So we have to prioritize where we spend our funds, which programs we offer, and which communities we serve. We try to reach them all, but that's probably one of the greatest challenges because we really like to help everyone. Okay, so now your bio says you are also a grant writer. Which job is more fun? Well, the fun part is implementing the programs but the necessary part, cha-ching, cha-ching, we need the money to buy the items that we need for the programming. But the fun part, of course, is being there in the community and meeting their needs by programs, services, and education and materials. But you know what costs the most? If you're the medicine. That is... Th- yeah, that's, that's true, too. Like Medicine is expensive Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so we like to focus on prevention prevention is taking steps so that you do not need the medicine but if you do come across an illness or a cough or the flu Mm -hmm. come see us we can help you out Mm -hmm. all right so your job helps the community and is funded by the local government how does that Well, the local government, they do have funding put aside to the most important things that our community needs are. And then they write us a check and we write reports and we do exactly what we say we're going to do in that report. Yeah, so it's called accountability. Say that word with me. Accountability. Accountability, yes. Okay, okay. So if my listeners want to grow up to be a community programs manager, what advice would you give them? Remember I mentioned that I like biology and you like math? You've Mm got to have good grades to go to college. Wow. So I stayed in school. I went to college for four years, and then I went back to school to graduate school for four more years. So I have a bachelor's degree, and I also have two master's degrees. You may not need all of that, but you have to have a passion to work with the people Mm -hmm. and serve and also lead. Mm. I also have interns and volunteers. You have to be of a certain age, but I can talk with you a little bit after if you're interested. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so your bio says you work with and for public health. What is public health? That's a really great question. I, al- I often say I am public health. Public health is addressing health outcomes and keeping the entire community healthy at a population level. For example, you take good care of your teeth. You were telling me how you brush. If we were to go to a school setting or in the community and we are focusing on 
the entire community having healthy teeth, that's taking your individual level um, focus to the entire community. So public health refers to the health of a community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So don't you learn most of that stuff in school? And what does the health department do in the community? Well, you may learn some basic health things in school, like do they teach you how to brush your teeth in school? Do they wash your hands and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at the health department, we do a lot more than that. We actually have programs such as um, Rethink Your Drink, where we tell you how much water you should drink all day, eating healthy foods and meals and snacks, Hmm. how to take your blood pressure, and move 60 minutes each day. And also, sleep is important, too. So at the health department, we have several programs. We work with the environment, so we make sure that the, that the environment is healthy. We make sure that we have emergency preparedness if there are any disasters that come to our state. Mm-hmm. We're there to help with that. We help with those who may smoke tobacco. So we do that. And you may mention, you may learn something about the uh, bad habits of smoking and drugs in school. But at the health department, we provide a little bit more information about that. And we also help moms to have healthy babies. Mm. And we do a lot more, too. But the health department, we're, we're a great resource. And when you were born, your parents probably came to our office to pick up your birth certificate. Wow. Pop. So your Bible says that you address health equity. What is health equity and how do you address it? One of the things that we do is we provide people with the skills, the tools that they need that will have the best outcome for them. For example, did you see when I walked in how tall I am? Mm -hmm. Do you think I could ride your bike? No. Why not? It's a bike. I'm too big or you're for your bike. And if we were to uh, move 60 minutes a day, each day, it would be hard for me to ride your bike. So what I would do to make things um, even, if you will, for my for the best outcome, I would get a bike that fits me and you would have a bike and helmet to fit you. Oh, oh my teacher says that I use my every day when I Do you use math when being a community programs manager? I do. And I mentioned that I'm a grant writer, so I have to do a lot of mathematical equations and adding up and subtracting when I'm using money out of my budget, but also when the money's coming into the budget. I have to do some math. Okay, so when you're not working on helping the community, what do you do for fun? You know what I like to do? I like to go shopping. You like to shop? All that, but yeah. <laughs> but my dad doesn't. Yeah, and I like biking. I like running. I am a triathlon triathlete. So I like I like staying active, and I like helping the community even when I'm not working yeah. as a community programs manager. I like working in the community. Mm-hmm. So do you play video games? What's your favorite one? I don't play video games, but when I did. But I may try that ice cream game that you were talking about. Like but do you play it on your phone? I do, and I was gonna I was gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, it's not really a video game, but I do like words with friends, and it's kind of a video. It's like an adult video game, sorta. But when I was younger, you know what my game was? Miss Pac Man. Okay, so what is your favorite book? My favorite book, one book that stays relevant and never changes. It's the Bible. Of course. Of course. You, you've seen that book before. Yes, I have. All right. But I do like books about um, self-help and understanding love languages. Mm-hmm. Similar to giving people what they need. Knowing their love languages, you love people the way they want to be loved. So do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners who want to follow you? Well, if you want more information about the Florida Department of Health, in Seminole County in all of our services, you can go to www.seminolecohealth.com.
www.healthyshareshow.com. And we also have a community shared Facebook group, which is Healthy Seminole County Facebook. And that's where we post all of the fun cardio classes like the African dance, the Zumba, and yoga. And this is open for kids, too. We encourage kids to come. Zumba. Zumba. And yoga. Namaste. Namaste. So you can you can follow us there and like all of our things. And I would love for you to join us for the Live, Work, Move Seminole 5K. We'll put all the information there, and you can look at all the pictures from, from the previous years, too. That would be nice. Okay, so what is the one question that you think I forgot to ask? Did you ask me if I like my job? Like your job? I do. I love my job. And another thing, how you can help with being a public health advocate. Well, how can I help being a public health advocate? Yeah, all that fun stuff, all those big words. Well, public health, again, is having healthy outcomes in the community. And public health is everything you do, everywhere you go. So at home, conserving water when you're brushing your teeth, when you're showering, recycling your trash at home, becoming physically active and getting mom and dad to get physically active and having healthy meals and eating more snacks. And remember, you got to you gotta drink water all day. Yep. And you gotta eat healthy foods for meals and snacks. Yes. And you have to move 60 minutes each day. And you have to sleep 8 to 10 hours each night. And look at you being all public health and stuff. And you can also pick up trash at outside too. And, and you know how you're being public health? Because you're influencing and impacting the healthy outcomes for your family. And when they see you being healthy, your students and your the other students in your class, they may follow. And then your neighbors will follow. And then you're impacting the one thing that you're doing. You're changing the whole community. And you're being public health. All right. Thank you, Bernice, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? I can do that. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. The Tribea Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Airboat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an airboat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Get ready, it's time for the Bowling Score Report! So I gotta go bowling this week at Boardwalk Bowling, and Mr. Bowling helped me a bit. I got a 119, an 89, and an 86 in a final game. I played with Mia, Kyle, and Emily. It was a lot of fun. We had to leave fast, so I did not get to play Hyperdeck. We will see what I get next. So, if you want to go bowling with me, be sure to join me at the new Fall League at Boardwalk Bowling, Saturdays at 10 a.m. in the morning, bro. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! And now it's time for Math Corners. 
thank you so much for Denise for helping me with math corners today. We're going to talk about angles. So I've been doing my IXL work on math exercises, and we got into a number of problems that have to do with angles. First off, did you know that there are three main types of angles? Most people are aware of the acute angle, which is any angle less than 90 degrees, and the obtuse angle, which is any angle more than 90 degrees. So you also have the right angle. This is the angle that is exactly 90 degrees. But wait, there are more. There is a special case angle called the straight angle. This is exactly 180 degrees. This is important because there are other types that are based on the relationship of different angles. So relationship angles are two or more angles that work together. So you have vertical angles, which are two angles formed by intersecting lines. They cannot be adjacent to each other, but are always equal in measure. They are always across from each other in the corners of an X formed by two lines. Then you have complementary angles and supplementary angles. These are two angles who measures up and add up to 90 degrees for complementary and 180 degrees for supplementary. So if you have two angles, one 30 degrees and 160 degrees, they're complementary angles. So, Bernice, do you not know all about types of angles? I do know about these angles, and I think I learned a little bit more this time. So, thank you so much, Bernice, for your help with math corners. You're welcome. And now it's time for the heart of a line. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by heart of the line. This is for leadership, integrity, obedience, and ability. This week, we're going to talk about integrity. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. The qualities of integrity is honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and fairness. Sometimes integrity is doing what is right even when people are around. This last week, I was playing in a cornhole tournament. My dad and I had our own regulation board, and we were really good when we were playing on our own board. But when you go to a tournament, there are lots of other people with their own boards as well. The best way to be fair is to ensure that the players pick a board that they are not used to. So I wanted to play an hour board, and my dad said that they would not be fair to the other team. So we ensured the integrity of the game by not playing on our own board. We got all the way to third place. So, Bernice, did you see or use integrity at all this week? I use integrity each and every day. So, I'll tell you what happened, just real quick. You know, have you ever, has, have you ever been in a situation where someone did something that hurt your feelings? Yep. And you really want to do something back? Well, someone hurt my feelings this week, and I didn't hurt their feelings back. I operated with integrity. I did the right thing. I did not hurt their feelings back, even though I was a little sad about what they did to me. When I was looking at this, leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility, I would say integrity. Because when you have integrity and you do the right thing, people will follow you and they will likely be obedient as well. And then that's a good quality of a leader. So, and a leader also has nobility. And they do. Yeah. So it would. my favorite would be integrity. Because it like, it's like a domino effect. That is true. We have to be lion strong. In everything we do. Amen. And that's our show, folks. I want to say good one. The online, the magic, the news. But for being my special guest this week, that has been so much fun talking with you today. And I look forward to learning more about how the government helps the public and ways kids can be healthy in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tiberius. You are so welcome. All right, on. And be sure to listen to this time. The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boyd. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Rune manager, Danny Boy. Broadcast associate, James Smith. And your program host, Tiberius Boy. The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.